Hi guys and welcome to the first of the ink tutorials. There's a lot of stuff in your box but what I wanted to do is focus on the things that I'd learned uh, from the past and one of the things that I learned in art school was what happens when you use pelican ink or quink or any fountain pen ink and then apply bleach to it. It's not light fast so it will eventually it will fade but um, you can potentially scan these things and use them afterwards so um, you've got a digital copy. I mean it's not going to fade for many many years but I'm just saying it's not going to stay. If you put it in direct sunlight it will have an effect on it. What we're going to do is we are going to paint just using your pelican ink. So here we have several techniques. In the background we have pure out of the bottle pelican ink we have um, the moon which was left completely white, so that was I carved that out within uh, this 100% pelican ink, and then we put I put different, different layers down. On top of that, there is also the China Graph pencil, and then I've also used bleach to you know carve away the stars on top of the 100% ink, which means that you've got the ability basically to add white back in, which is nice. But it does there is lot there are lots of different ways of doing this, so you could do splatter, you can mix it in with water, so it's quite you know it's, it's not as uh, concentrated that you can get loads of different effects from putting bleach onto pelican ink or any other fountain pen ink. So it's quite interesting. Right, so let's crack on and see how we've done this one. So this video comes with a bit of a warning in that bleach is a hazardous substance. So obviously just be careful with it. What I did was I kept it in that, um, as you can see at the top, there's a little pot there with a small amount of thin bleach in. Um, and that is used sparingly. So obviously don't, um, don't be eating it. What I'm doing now is I'm taking my flat brush, um, which is one of the two that are included, and I am marking out, you can see that I've very faintly with a pencil drawn a circle, which will help me place my moon. Um, the rest of it, I'm just filling it in. What you'll have happen is when you layer over the uh, pelican ink, you'll, you'll see that it, it is more intense where you have two layers, three layers, but it's quite nice. Um, so you can play with that. And I'm just neatly, I say neatly, <laughs> not that neat um neatly going around that area where the moon's going to be and then just filling the rest in there's a, a little bit of a little bit of bleach bleach being applied here just to get rid of um a speck and just taking that off actually that wasn't bleach that was water just filling in that extra space now with that flat brush and just making a nice neat edge So now comes uh, the mixing. So you can use the pelican ink alongside water uh, just to create different tones. So I'm going to put down a very, um, a very kind of dilute uh, layer first, which just gives you something to go off. What I've done is I've avoided the bottom, the bottom edge of the moon because that crescent, um, well, it's not the crescent, it's the the edge of the moon which is going to get hit by light. Um, I'm keen to keep because it's going to help convince the eye that it's a three-dimensional thing and also you know what we we know the moon looks like. So just used, you saw I just dipped my brush in the water rather than the ink and that just gives you a bit more um, pliability is probably the wrong word but it, it allows you to spread fluidity, that's probably a better one, um, it allows you to spread that ink further without adding any additional blue. So here you saw that I put my um, brush back in the blue and it gives you a lot more of the blue tone but if you just want to spread it um, and maybe even dilute it just add some water. I've swapped my brush as well which gives you a bit more control. Now I'm using um, one of the brush pens, which I've just put a small amount of bleach on. Um, so you can see down in the left hand corner what happens when you put bleach onto the pelican ink. The thing I will note with this, you'll see it's almost, it's very immediate what happens with the, with the bleach on the pelican. You wanna, your ink, uh, your bleach blob will continue to bleed so you only want to put down if you want a tiny star you need to put down a really tiny amount because you saw how small those um, initial blocks of bleach were and now and how they've spread i mean you you were going to want variety in this sky anyway so it kind of doesn't matter if you have some you know you have some bigger ones and i want a shooting star just for a bit of variety so you can use the dry brush effect with the bleach to kind of get a diluted uh a bit of bleach going down and, and it will be it's the the beauty of putting the bleach on the pelican is that it's quite a yellow it makes quite a yellow um end result 
which I think is quite nice because it, it throws with the, the different shades of blue, it, it kind of uh, layers with the white to make a slightly different tone, which I think is really cool. So what I've done is I've swapped to my other brush um, and put some bleach on that because it's got a slightly finer point, which I could control a bit more. Just adding another shooting star for good measure. And it will literally lift. When you put that down, immediately the pigment in the in the ink will, you know, it is bleached. So now I'm trying to figure out where I want to add my tone. So I'm looking at um, off screen. I am looking at a, um, a photo of the moon and just looking at where the shadows are cast so that you can start to add those craters in, in a way which is convincing. And the beauty of uh, this light watercolor um, less so than watercolour because I think that I got used to using watercolour where you can literally remove practically everything you put down. When you put ink down and you were to say use a tissue just to sponge it off, a lot of the colour will stay. Um, but you do have the ability to layer up. So the amount of water you put in will affect how much you can take off because if you put a really diluted layer of ink down, you could lift practically all of it off. So that's quite a... Um, it's quite a, it's almost finished first or second layer of ink on that. Uh, and here's me using that tissue, like I mentioned, to try and remove a bit. But it, as you saw, it didn't really pull everything up, but it just helps with the control if you do in areas where you do want to control what's going on. And you will naturally, with your paper, find that areas pull with ink because of the way that it's crinkled. And here's me just cleaning up a bit of that bottom edge just to slightly round it off where I wasn't quite as neat as I'd have liked with um, the initial placement of the 100% Pelican. And you'll find that sometimes you have to use uh, a bit more bleach than you would think because of how uh, it won't lift the Pelican completely. You can see around the edge it is really quite rich in that bottom left hand corner whereas it lifts a lot easier on that faint blue at the top just there. And this bleach also helps with the idea of it glowing as well. So where it's gone yellow in the bottom left, it, it's kind of, it's working um, to help us. Now that layer of um, additional detail on the moon is kind of dried, what I'm doing is I'm adding in some additional, additional tone um, just to make the craters and stuff kind of feel a bit more realistic. I'm using a little bit of bleach on here just to pick up some areas that I want to highlight because where there is shadow there's normally a bit of in order to get the, the best three-dimensional effect you will have to add in a bit of highlight too. So I'm using a sort of scratchiness with the brush pen and then you have the ability afterwards to layer back on top of where you are bleached. If there is a lot of bleach on there it will affect what you've done um, in terms of adding the ink back on and it will sort of as you can see um, in the first the bigger bit of bleach that I put down there is that white mark there and it will slowly eat away but it does allow you a bit of freedom. Just cleaning up that edge with the bleach. Just adding in a bit more of that glow that I mentioned a minute ago. And there is some of that really rich um, pelican there. And what I'm doing now is just where I decided not to go all the way to the edge, just adding in that um, additional shadow on that side and then toweling away with the with the tissue. Always have a tissue handy because you'll never know, um, not only in life, but when you might need one when it comes to ink. Because as I mentioned, that certain areas of the paper will pull unexpectedly with ink and you might want to um, rid yourself of a little bit. Just adding in a little bit more um, on the shadow side. I think this is this is richer in terms of the amount of pelican that I'm putting down because at this point you are really wanting to focus on where it is dark. And with that point, you have the ability to um, you know draw a little bit more actively with it. Just a little bit more shadow on the bottom right. And then I'm going to add in just a small amount with the China graph um, where the uh, the bleach wasn't necessarily playing ball. Just some some sort of um, gesture at texture because you can add in 
um, lines are quite difficult when it comes to comes with bleach because it wants to bleed out. Whereas here you can add in the sort of hatching that I've done there to, to layer that texture in. All right, and there we have it. Well, I hope that was interesting. Well, it's a different way of using your Pelican ink and also the bleach works with the other acrylic inks as well, um, which we'll see in future tutorials. It's just an interesting way of adding um, a different dynamic to the way that you're putting down ink in a slightly less controlled way, or a very controlled way, it depends how you do it. So that is today's tutorial and we'll see you again on the 15th of next month. Bye guys.